acoustic shop. Uh, half of our staff, at least, you know, how many are out? A lot. Yeah. A lot of us are in North Carolina for IBMA. So you got John and Jeremy who usually do these things. They're not here. And so I have been tasked with doing our Takeover Tuesday, which is in the repair room, as you can see. Um, so Janelle and I were thinking, what could we talk about? And we decided that we talk about things that you can do on your own like dining room table or even just you know just a nice flat surface when or say like when you're on tour or something like that and something goes squirrely with your guitar there's some things that you can do to fix your own instrument when you're not right next to a luthier or repair tech so uh, I'm gonna go through a few of those things Let's see, so I want to talk about tuners first. I've got all the strings off of this Eastman, and there's some things that um, happen with tuners that are a really easy fix. And it's, you know, very simple, just sometimes people don't really pay attention to what's going on besides just the actual tuning of the string. But sometimes these buttons can get loose, and it's super easy. So. You can loosen and tighten them here. So when you start noticing that there's like a lot of give, um, a really simple fix is just tightening this screw up and voila, it's nice and tight again. Um, these are close buttons. So if you're starting to notice something when it's the, the tuner is squirrely here, that's going to be a big issue. But I've got another thing that I can show you if you have open back tuners. So this is an Ortega. And these are open back tuners. So sometimes these things can get really, really tight or loose. And one of the things that you can do to alleviate that is moving this screw to fix this gear and that will help kind of cinch in the worm gear and this gear together. So it's not scary at all. It's just as simple as this. So when you're starting to notice that like your tuner is getting a little loose and there's give before you can actually get the, the string up to pitch, you've just got to adjust this screw and that helps significantly. Is it possible to over tighten your screws? Yes. Um, so that's something, that's a very good question. Um, do it in very small increments. With these kind of screws, they're not like, they're not built for for much beside, I mean, it's just an instrument screw. It's there, so it's easy to strip them out, and that's a huge bummer. So, when you're when you're um, adjusting these, just take it like quarter turns either direction. So if it feels if your tuner feels too tight, just take it a little bit that way and test it and and play with it. But always just don't ever go like really forceful with these screws because they're incredibly delicate and from personal experiment experience it sucks when you strip a screw. Okay. So that kind of just gives you a, a quick run run around. If you have if you have open back tuners like this, it's awesome because it's really easy to oil them and uh, that's what this toothbrush is for. So um, a lot of the times little bits of grit will get into these worm gears and you can just use a bit of oil. I use this now too. That works really, really well. Um, you have to kind of be careful because it sprays a little bit. So what I like to do is actually take the tuners off of the headstock, but just using a toothbrush and cleaning out the gears will significantly help the, the tuners actually work better. The other thing is a really big bummer when it happens when you are not at the shop or something like when you're on the road or whatever. Uh, that is sometimes the jack gets loose. So on this one, there's tons of give. So the nuts and washers inside of the jack are starting to get a little loose so it can't push against the end block here. 
And so when you try to plug in, it just gets all floppy. And that's uh, very stressful sometimes when you're when you're playing a show and you realize that like there's just there's just so much give here and you start getting anxious. But it's pretty easy to fix actually. So I have tools that make this a lot easier, but I'm going to try to show you how to do this without using the tools. And, that, and so you just need a few things. You need a wrench. I have a broken little screwdriver here and my hands. And I will show you how to do this. So the first thing you do, take the strings off and you're going to hold on to the jack and you'll feel it. It's way, way down here, but you can, you can feel it and just try to hold on to it so it stays firm. And I highly recommend a dish so you don't lose all these tiny little things. And be careful as well because there's washers inside here that will slip off if you're not careful. So you've got a couple of washers and your nut. Yeah, you sent it out yesterday. How, because it's loose in here, you want to shorten this area a little bit. So I'm going to do five or six turns. And then, very Washington is watching. Oh, nice. Very carefully. is really difficult but you can do it without all sorts of stuff um, that's why I have this so if you have a spare cable around you can make this job a little bit easier so I'll plug that in and now we can feed it through and it's close, so when you're doing this yourself, you want like maybe an eighth inch of the wood showing before the jack, that, that outer collar of the jack. So I'm going to do one more turn to shorten that length, maybe two. That's nice. Now this part is tricky without a lot of tools. You've just got to hold on to that. Get the washer on. Make sure you don't poke the whole thing back inside of the guitar because that's a bummer. I think he's expecting it. So go ahead and let it spin. I, I'd say that way they didn't just have that muddy back. He's going to spin it. Oh. These tips are great. Thank you. No problem. Now, if you've got a, a nice small little screwdriver like this, be very careful not to gouge the jack because then you're going to make screwing on the end pin a little bit more difficult. But you just want to kind of hold it there so it doesn't move and then you can tighten it somebody suggesting a large paper clip might hold that pretty good while you work on it Ooh. as long as it's pretty stiff material because this is you gotta kind of tighten that up enough where it's not going to move on you. But yeah, I think a paper clip would work as long as it's thick enough material. And then 
You do not have a loose jack anymore. So that's something that's really, really nice when you're, it's nice to know how to do when you're not, you don't have a, a repair tech handy. Um, another thing would be to fix some of the buzzing issues here. This isn't, um, this doesn't always work. Sometimes you have to file the nut, but sometimes a little bit of like Vaseline or something, I use this and I also have another little um, thing. Ooh, here, this is actually my favorite one. This works really well when you get like a weird sympathetic buzz and you know that it's like when you, when you strum the guitar open and you hear it, it's probably coming from the nut. Um, and what will sometimes fix this is just a little bit, like if you don't have this Vaseline chapstick will sometimes work, but just it just fills it a little bit so it kind of, it lubricates it and allows that buzz to go away because that's an infuriating sound. So this is really handy. You just put a tiny little bit on there. And a toothpick would work well. I like this just because it's got a bit of felt on the tip. And run it through. And I think it kind of cleans it as well. So you might have like a little bit of grit in there that's causing some of that buzz. And many times, this is all it takes to get rid of it. How about a dab of blue Loctite on the jack thread so it doesn't back off? Yeah, absolutely. The main issue with that, with Loctite, is when the washers inside move, but you could put the Loctite on side, inside of the, on the jack as well, just to make sure that that sucker stays where it needs to be. So that's a really good idea. And then, um, that's pretty much it besides your string change. So I would recommend getting something like this to just put in your guitar case. So when you break a string on stage, it's not um, as difficult and it's a nice quick string change. I really like these, just you've got a string winder on it, uh, peg puller, and then cutters as well. And we'll go ahead and do a string change. So there's a billion types of ways to change strings, but the one that I like the most is very easy, and it makes it super easy to take the strings off and keeps it from gouging the headstock. So some, some ways that people do it, uh, it's called the lock-in method, and I notice with that one, when you lock the string in a specific way, it points the string down and then scratches the headstock or is trying to, and it's very scary. So this way, it's a nice, safe way to keep that headstock clean. Do you know what happened to the Larabe demos? I didn't know. I've been gone for a little <laughs> bit, so. <laughs> what Larabe demos? So on my bass side strings, I wrap it around once, and then I go over the loop inside of the slot, and then under. And that locks it. Oh, after this, I can show you one more thing, which is what every guitar player or mandolin player or banjo player, anything with a truss rod, any, any player that plays an instrument that has a adjustable truss rod in it should know how to do, which is adjusting the neck a little bit. So after I string this up, I'll show you how to do that. Make a loop. Go under the string, 
voilà. It may be my imagination, but then I didn't, when I didn't cut the excess off last time I changed the strings, it had a better sound. When you didn't cut the, so you just leave them flopping like this? I guess. <laughs> That's very interesting. Might have to test that out. Uh-huh. Yeah, maybe uh, one of these Working Wednesdays are those, uh, those things Janelle and, I, Janelle and I do with yarn and embroidery thread. We'll see what happens when we don't cut the excess string off see if it changes it. I'm too scared. I'm afraid I'm going to poke my eyeball if I keep the excess string on. Whenever they change their strings, not sure how good of an idea that is. But Add super glue to the so it nut. Doesn't go out of tune. Oh. I don't know. I I think that because you've got so much, the the strings still stretch. So if you added super glue to the nut and glued the string in, you might just. That sounds that sounds wacky, but I've never tried that. So. To each their own, I guess. Person who said they don't cut their strings says they have poked themselves in the <laughs> <laughs> That sounds unpleasant. So on the treble side, so both both ways, you want that hole kind of pointing towards the logo on your headstock. But on the treble side, I wrap it twice. And then over and then through this way I sandwich the string. That's beautiful because it locks it. So you don't get the string slipping and it's just a very quick and simple method. And you have Scott asking, do you have a trick so that the pegs don't pop out while you restring? Yeah, I do. That's really terrifying when that happens. So with some bridge plates, which is the, the material underneath the bridge on the inside of the guitar, sometimes it's really hard to get that ball in to just pull up. So I'll crook it just a little bit, and then I feed it through, and then I hold the bridge pin down and then pull up on the string. and that should keep it where it needs to be and you can kind of tell when it's in the right spot because you can see a little bit of that extra winding at the very um, end of the string. Can you see that through the camera? It's just a tiny little bit of silver there. Yeah. Yep, there it is. Yeah. So that you can tell that it's in the right spot that way and that way the, you'll know that the bridge pin is holding against the bridge plate and it's not going to pop up on the the bridge pin isn't just going to pop up on you, which I really don't like when that happens. Janelle can back me up on this. I am very, I get startled really easily, so I like when things go right. Breaking a string is one of my least favorite sounds and feelings. Oh yeah, I do that. Um, I'll show you what I use. I used to just collect bone dust when I was, I was shaping a saddle, but Stu Mac makes this stuff. So this is bone dust and some sort of lubricant inside. And you can pour that into um, a loose slot on your nut when you when you're noticing a lot of like if it's if it's worn down you can fill it with that add super glue and then file it again and it's very very strong i'm thrilled to death with this stuff
Super glue and baking soda? Yep, that's another one. This is a little bit stronger just because it's bone, but um, super glue and ba baking soda works too. Any tips for keeping the mando strings from coming off the tailpiece? Yeah, I'll Hopefully show you. Um, I don't know if I can describe that with words, but I can show you. No haunted house for Luke. No, God, no. I've been, on, I've been to one, and I have never had more armpit sweat in my life. It was awful. It was a first date in seventh grade, and it was so embarrassing. <laughs> I don't like being startled. Tyler will sometimes make this crazy popping noise with his mouth when I'm tuning an E string on a mandolin just because he knows how tense I get when I'm, when I'm tuning a string, especially when I know if it's kind of old, because it might pop on me. And it's the worst. Okay, so mandolin. I think I've got a spare mandolin string so I can show you. Oh, that's not, this isn't going to be a very good example. But I can show you at least kind of what I do. Um, so to keep, these are, these are pretty easy. It's not like an Eastman. Hold on, I'll be back. I got it. So on an Eastman bridge, this is where I noticed the string slipping a lot, just because it's the way you have to feed it. So the first thing I do is I crook that end and feed it, and then I bend this just a little bit. Pop it on, and then I use my fingernail, push it in, and then pull, and then that should keep it in place. I'll save this string. Okay, last thing, and this is for <sighs> mandolins or, or guitars. I'm going to show you on guitar because it's a little bit easier to, to see. Truss rod adjustments. So this one is scary at first just because it's... Uh, you're, you're messing with kind of something that you think is really integral to the guitar, and it is, but um, it's pretty safe to do this yourself. So on um, most guitars, they will come with a wrench kind of like this. So all you do is the, the, the most difficult part is actually finding the nut inside of here to adjust it. But you'll hear that kind of metal sound and that means you're close to it. There's just a little hole right at the edge of the fretboard inside of the sound hole. If you're getting buzzing on your guitar, especially around like four to eight, probably means that your neck has a back bow on it. And that means you need to loosen that truss rod. And that means you're going to take it to the left. And what I recommend is just small increments of turning. So like a quarter turn, 
maybe about that much. And then what I do is I sight the neck and see how much that has changed the curve in the neck. And then another thing that you can do, sometimes if you're not practiced at this, it's kind of hard to tell where that bow is. So another way you can tell if you've got the right action is to put your finger on the first fret and the twelfth fret. And then you look around five and six. And if the string is just about like a credit card's width from the fret, then you know you've got, you've got kind of the right amount of relief in the neck. So um, that's just, that's a really nice way to really sight if your action's kind of appropriate for the guitar. Um, if, you've, if you feel like around four to eight frets, the action is really high, that means you have a back bow in it, and then you're going to want to tighten the truss rod. So we come in, and then a quarter turn, and test it. And yeah, that's, that's it. It's not scary. The most important thing is just to not do anything drastic with the truss rod. Just quarter turns, test it, quarter turns. And obviously playing it while you're doing this too, just so you can kind of feel if it's changed it at all. And I think that's really all I've got. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching this. Uh, this, was, this was fun, Janelle. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it again sometime. Yeah, let's do it again.